Hey, and welcome back to the third person camera tutorials in Unity. Uh, in this lesson, we're going to be working a little bit less on the camera controls and more on just like the character's movement and his animation and mechanism. So the thing that we're going to want to try to implement here is this sort of pivoting behavior that Mario has here. So if he's running at a fast enough speed and if you switch directions quickly enough, he does this pivoting where he just moves backwards and forwards and it's just a lot faster way of turning than turning all the way around like this. So it's it's a nice thing and I think it's pretty much been extended into just about every Nintendo game since uh, they started doing this third person stuff. And I think it's I think it's a nice behavior and uh, it's definitely come a long ways. Link's as you can see is a lot nicer than, than Mario's is. So we're going to try to implement that in, in Unity in our character controller. So let's go back to Unity and we'll open up our animation tree. So far it's pretty simple. <laughs> it's about as simple as you can get I think besides just having a idle tree. But we've got this locomotion, we have this idle, and they don't really go anywhere else. So what we want to do is we want to add in some new blend trees for this pivoting. Because we want to blend uh, depending on how much, how much angle we want to pivot by. So we'll take this guy and we'll make a new one. We're going to make four of these. And we're going to just call this one Locomotion Pivot Left. Copy this name. Locomotion Pivot Right. So we're going to have separate blend trees for each one of our pivots. You can situate those however you want. I usually just kind of make a, I guess like an X out of them or something. Post a video response of your, of your best blend tree art. So this one is going to be our idle pivot left and idle pivot right. Cool, so we've got our blend trees now. We need to create transitions to all of these. Oops. And these transitions I just created are the equivalent of this behavior, like the, the ability to just pivot around while you're in the idle state. And if you think about it, you can usually pivot and then move into a run as well. So there's no need to go back to the idle state. So we're going to also create a node connecting the idle pivots to our locomotion tree. But not the other way around. We don't want to go from locomotion to a pivot. Okay, that looks good. We want to do the same thing for our locomotion pivots. And now we want to start adding animations to these. So let's open up the blend trees. I usually just go ahead and name them uh, the same thing as their base layer. So we've got our idle pivot right here. And we want to create a bunch of new animations for this. So we're going to add three motion fields. And we're going to go to our animations here. And we've got several animations to choose from. The ones that we're going to want to use, uh, we're going to want to use turn on spot right, turn on spot right B, turn on right C, and turn on right D. So we're actually going to need a few more of these. And let's go ahead and drag our animations into the tree. Cool. So we got all those in there. I want to add one more in there. We want to have a uh, an idle state so that we can so we can blend between that as well. So that's pretty simple. All you have to do is grab the idle animation and drag it in. So let's homogenize the time scales and go ahead and set thresholds for all of these. We want to do this based on angle. So this will be 45 degrees, 90 degrees, 135 degrees, and a full 180 degrees. If you actually look at these animations, you'll see that each one of them corresponds to that much of a turn. So that's 180 degrees. Uh, this one is, I think, 135, so on and so forth. So the idea is to blend between all these angle degrees so we can turn any degrees. That probably shouldn't be infinity. That should probably be like one. So we'll go ahead and set that. Cool. Uh, let's do the same thing in the left tree. Going to want to name this one Idle Pivot left and we want to add a bunch of new motion fields as well and the idea is basically the same you just want to 
You just want to drag in all of your animations into the tree. Turn on spot left A, left B, that's 90 degrees, C is 135, and D is, I think, 180. Set that to 1. And the same thing goes for this. We set our thresholds at uh, corresponding angle degrees. These need to be negative, though, since we're turning left. Forgot to do that. Left is always negative, right is always positive, at least in our in our script here. So we've got that set up as well. Let's have a look at what this would what this would be like. It looks like our model is missing, so we need to go ahead and fix that. Okay, so that's just zero degree turn. It's like a twenty degree turn, thirty degree turn, an eighty degree turn and so on, and all the way up to 180 degrees. So this works pretty well. We can go ahead and preview this one as well. So that's idle all the way to 180 degree turn. Cool, so that's what we needed. Let's go ahead and build up the uh, locomotion trees for the pivoting. Locomotion pivot right. In this one, we're going to only have three fields. And the ones we want to use there are, in our run animations, we have something called plant and turn. And we just want to use these guys. So we got plant and turn right, plant and turn right 135, and 180. 90, 135, 180. Homogenize the time scales, and for the threshold, you just want to put the corresponding angles. That looks good. Same thing here. Create three new fields. And you want to drag in the animations we need. So we're going to use plant and turn left for these. And we're going to go from 180 to 135 to 90. Homogenize the time scale and put in the angles. Great. So that does it for our tree. Now we need to actually create a new variable for this angle degree. So we're going to call that variable angle. And we're going to make that the the actual value we're using here. So we're going to make all of these angle. We don't want to use direction. Nice. So that does it for that. And the last thing we need to do in our tree is we need to actually set conditions for all of these. So for the transition into the idle pivot, we want to make sure that this animation goes to completion. So we want to make it atomic. We want to set the uh, we want to set the begin condition to be a speed that is greater than 0.1 because we don't want to constantly be turning, and we want to have an angle value that's greater than 45. Oh, that was speed. So create a new one. Angle greater 45. Same thing goes for this one, but of course we want to use negative values here. So speed will. The speed should still be greater than 0.1, but the angle value here is negative. So less than negative 45. That looks good. We want to make the exit conditions simply the exit times. So those are already good to go. These should all just be, oh, we need to actually probably delete these. For some reason, um, if you create a transition, it's zero right here, which is not so good. We want to actually recreate these transitions now that we have animations. It's better to actually create the transitions after you have animations because it will actually set your exit time for you. So that looks a lot better. We want to also set a condition for moving straight from the idle pivots into a run. We want to have the exit time be one of those parameters. So we need to, sorry, we have to delete these again. 
and go ahead and create these back. So when I have exit time be one parameter, we also want to have if the speed is greater than this value here, 0 0.5, we want to go, we want to skip this and go straight into that. So that's pretty simple to do. All you have to do is just add in a new condition. Speed greater than 0.5. Same thing here. make sure that this is speed less than 0.5 and same thing for here nice so all of our transitions have been set up for our idle pivots we need to create transitions now to go into locomotion pivots which, as you can expect, are pretty much the same thing. You just want to set a speed, because you don't want to be pivoting if there's a small amount of speed, and that kind of gives you this behavior of how you can still turn. Uh, and if you pivot, you can pivot, and then if you're moving slowly, you kind of turn around. So if you saw it there, uh, Mario just turned around instead of pivoting. So that's pretty easy to do. All you have to do is add a condition. Set your angle is greater than 90 and your speed is greater than a half. Because speed should be at least that if you're if you're in this locomotion state. So go ahead and set speed greater than a half, angle greater than, less than here, negative 90. So that does it for our uh, in conditions. We need now to have some exit conditions. We wanna use exit time, that's one. Uh, the other one we wanna use is oh, oh wait sorry this exit time is messed up it's the same thing you just need to delete them and re-add them kind of a pain i wish that it would set the exit time for you okay so save that and now our locomotion tree is done that means we have our new variable here called angle but we're not actually setting it yet and this is pretty simple to do i think it's uh, pretty intuitive we just need to go into our character logic script and we need to pass a new value into our stick to world space we need to set a new float. So I'll pause the video for one second and we'll get into that. Hey, welcome back. Uh, we're going to be working on the scripting portion of the animation tree now. Uh, the thing, before we start, uh, I had made a mistake in the last video. This needed to be angle less than negative 90. I think it had said speed before. And additionally, I also set the speed on these animations a little bit higher just because the pivoting uh, tends to take a little bit less time and the animations are kind of long, so I just want to speed them up a little bit. And the same thing, I changed these to two as well. Okay, cool, let's get into scripting now. So what we wanna do is we wanna set this new, uh, we got this variable called angle here now. We need to use set float to set that. So we're gonna be doing these calculations in stick to world space. And we already have this angle that we want here. And it's as simple as just returning it before we divide it by 80. So we're just gonna add a new uh, parameter called angle out. And that's just gonna be the angle that we wanna output from this, from this method. And all we're going to do is we're going to say, if we're not pivoting, then we're going to set this angle. And not pivoting is just going to be another parameter that we set in, and it'll just be a Boolean value. So now we have to actually set this. So that's going to involve a little bit of work. Um, we're going to create a new variable called character angle in the update function. We're going to pass that in uh, to our method. So we're going to pass that uh, as well as we're going to reset the direction. So now we've got a new reference to a, our character angle value that we just added here, and we're going to send that as well as this method called is in pivot, and that's going to do the same kind of thing as we do it as in locomotion. So we're going to create a new method called is in pivot, and we're just going to check if uh, that should be base layer. There we go. That should be um, checking if the character animator controller is in either one of these two states, and if it is, we don't want to change that angle value, and that's what this whole bool is in pivot thing is doing. So if it's not pivoting, we set it. If it is pivoting, we don't want to set it. And it'll just kind of be what it was as the frame before. So as you know, we, it's not good to use string names there. So what we want to do is, instead of using string names, is we want to set uh, a new hash ID. So we're going to do string to hash on locomotion pivot L. And we want to do the same thing with locomotion pivot right. So there we go. We've got our two new animator string to hashes. And we want to check those in the function. So we need to add those into our little hash section up here. So let's just add both of those. 
left and right hash IDs. And we also want to um, change this is in pivot method to just simply check if those two IDs are, uh, if it's in either one of those two IDs, if the animator is either in this state or in this state, we want to say that we're pivoting. So now I want to change our conditions around a little bit here. I'm just going to set this real fast and, and explain it to you. Um, basically, the locomotion threshold, if the speed is greater than that, we want to only set the pivot if we're not currently pivoting. So that's the same idea here. It's just kind of like a, a safety check to make sure we're kind of um, not setting that angle unless we are not pivoting. And <laughs> that's kind of like a double negative, but you only want to set the angle if you are um, if you're not in a pivot, you want to set it. If you are in a pivot, you want to just let it be the same value. And another thing, if uh, we're just creating another dead zone here, if the locomotion threshold is, if the speed is under the locomotion threshold, basically if the character is sitting still, we want to make sure that we're definitely setting this to zero. Otherwise, the character will just sit here uh, and just keep on doing this turn animation, which <laughs> it looked a little pretty, probably pretty silly. So uh, that's uh, about all we have to do there. So let's make sure that we're outputting the right value for is in pivot. Let's test this real fast. So let's see, we're not in the pivot, as you can see down here. And then as soon as we change angles, it's returned true. So that method seems to work pretty well. And it looks like we can pivot both left and right, which is nice. But the problem with it is our character, if we turn slowly backwards, he kind of stops instead of pivoting. So if we don't turn fast enough, if we don't slam the stick when you're controlling it, if you don't bring it back fast enough, he kind of stops first. So the way to fix that is just to add a dampening value to the speed, uh, which is which is pretty easy to do, and we've done it before. So all we're going to do is just uh, set a speed damp value and change it over time delta time, and then just add a new uh, speed damp value to our list of variables here. And we're going to set it pretty low because it doesn't need to be very high. It just needs to account for the amount of time that it takes the user to take their finger from this position to that position. So it, it can be pretty pretty small. And we're just going to delete that debug statement save our script and let's test it out now all right so that feels pretty good and we can still do our slower turns which is nice in both directions and if we need to we can pivot during those we also have our uh, idle pivots which are pretty simple as well I went ahead and set this value for going into locomotion a little bit higher. I had to set it to 0.7 uh, just because it allows you to get a little bit more pivot action in. And as you can see, we can pivot and then go straight into a run, which is ideal. Um, that's how it, how it works here. He pivots and then runs. So we've got the same kind of thing. And that's it for this lesson. So now we've extended our animation tree. We're a little bit more... Uh, a little bit more advanced with the mechanism stuff now, and I think we're really taking advantage of the nice camera controls now. So thank you, and I'll see you next time where we're going to be covering how to do uh, a free camera motion in Unity.